Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Since the widespread use of submarines in World War I, the world needed to find a way of combating this new scourge of the deep. Only during the latter half of World War II were effective anti-submarine methods found. Two problems were solved, finding them and destroying them. On September 1914, three British warships were torpedoed and sank by the German submarine in the North Sea. These days, surface warships employ active or passive sonar to detect submerged submarines and then attack them with underwater homing torpedoes, anti-submarine rockets, and depth charges. Mark 54 or 46 torpedoes are not only used to attack ships, but rather go underwater, home in on a submarine, and destroy it. In the U.S. Navy, the Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer is used mostly in this role. So anti-submarine warfare is our ability to track, classify, and thought localize uh, submarines. Uh, we can, you know, detect them with sonar via active sonar or passive sonar. Active sonar where we're actively putting sound into the water, passive sonar where we're just listening for different noises. Another detection method used to locate submarines is sonobuoys. Sonobuoys are specialized sensors used by aircraft and ships to detect submarines underwater. These devices float on the ocean surface, with their hydrophones submerged to collect acoustic data. Sonobuoys send collected data back to monitoring stations or airplanes via radio transmissions. They play an important role in anti-submarine warfare by detecting and tracking submarines with passive or active sonar. Acoustic signatures of submarines are the distinct sounds produced by a submarine's machinery, hull form, and movement through water. These characteristics are like acoustic fingerprints, allowing navies to recognize and classify various submarine kinds. Sonobuoys aid in detecting and identifying submarines by studying their signatures, hence improving maritime security by allowing Allied vessels to utilize the correct offensive response. In the U.S. Marine Corps, these sensors are deployed by hand from the door of a UH-1Y Venom helicopter, while the U.S. Navy deploys them using MH-60 Seahawk helicopters. Marine Corps UH-1Ys deploy from amphibious assault ships. while Seahawks deploy from various U.S. Navy vessels, most notably Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyers, designated DDGs. Sonobuoys can be dropped to find active contact or to lay down a listening chain to ensure submarines cannot pass a certain point in the water, such as in channels. Fixed-wing aircraft employed by the U.S. Navy include the P-8 Poseidon, operated from land bases. The P-8 Poseidon is a U.S. Navy maritime patrol and reconnaissance aircraft based on the Boeing 737.
It specializes in anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. The P-8 outfitted with modern sensors, weapons, and communication systems improves the Navy's ability to detect submarines and surface ships and conduct search and rescue operations. It can detect and destroy submarines without assistance from any surface vessel or submarine. Another notable aircraft is the P-3 Orion. During the Rim of the Pacific 2016 exercise, P-3 Orion aircraft carried out anti-submarine warfare, maritime patrol, and surveillance operations. The P-3s, which were crewed by U.S. Navy and partner forces, used Sonoboys, radar and electronic surveillance equipment. The exercise included coordinated operations with other naval and air assets to promote interoperability among participating nations. The P-3 Orions were critical in improving maritime security and situational awareness throughout the multinational exercise, including 40 ships and over 200 aircraft. One of the most successful vessels for anti-submarine warfare is the Arleigh Burke-class destroyer. In addition to its sonar array in the bow, the vessel also has a towed sonar array, which is towed far behind the vessel to ensure the ship's sounds do not interfere with the equipment. Arleigh Burke class destroyers are outfitted with MK32 triple torpedo tube launchers that fire MK46 or MK54 lightweight torpedoes. These torpedoes are intended for anti submarine warfare and can target and destroy enemy submarines with high precision, increasing the destroyer's undersea combat capabilities. They can intercept submarines at up to 10,000 yards and a depth greater than any military submarine can operate at. <laughs> Torpedo launches against submarines are controlled by the ship's command information center. After identifying a target, the command guides the launch. Compressed air propels the torpedo out of the tube where it activates its propulsion system navigates to its target and engages it. Homing is performed by active or passive active acoustic homing. Underwater communication is exceptionally difficult. NATO's Science and Technology Organization Center for Maritime Research and Experimentation, situated in La Spezia, Italy, created Janus, a groundbreaking standard for underwater acoustic communication. All NATO allies recognize Janus as a NATO standard, making it the first internationally recognized digital underwater communication system. This milestone lays the path for a plethora of novel underwater communication applications.
Janice solves the obstacles of underwater communication, such as signal distortion and restricted bandwidth, by introducing a dependable protocol. It enables diverse undersea systems to interact effortlessly, independent of manufacturer or country of origin. This interoperability is critical for joint maritime activities, including search and rescue, environmental monitoring, and mine countermeasures. Adopting Janus as a NATO standard is a significant step forward in underwater technology, encouraging increased cooperation and coordination among NATO member nations. It improves situational awareness, operating efficiency, and safety in maritime contexts. Furthermore, Janus's acknowledgement promotes additional study and development, which may lead to new applications in domains such as underwater robotics, oceanography, and defense. The research focus of CMRE is to do ASW using a network of autonomous platforms, autonomous underwater vehicles, autonomous surface vehicles, and the idea is that together, by sharing information, by, by processing their detections, their contacts, their tracks jointly, they can achieve great performance. And, and necessary to that is the two vehicles communicating and communicating with the Alliance and communicating with the surface platforms. CMRE's Slocum Electric Glider is an autonomous underwater vehicle designed for long-term oceanographic expeditions. It is outfitted with sensors that collect a wide range of data, including temperature, salinity, and currents over extended durations and distances. The glider works by altering its buoyancy to glide through the water in a sawtooth pattern, conserving energy and allowing for extended deployment. Incorporating the Janus communications protocol considerably improves the Slocum Electric Glider's operational capabilities. Janus allows the glider to successfully connect with other underwater assets, surface vessels, and maritime command centers. This compatibility is critical for coordinating missions with many AUVs and other underwater technologies. The Slocum Electric Glider uses Janus to transmit collected data in real time, receive new instructions, and alter mission parameters while submerged. This capacity means the glider can adjust to changing mission needs and environmental circumstances without repeatedly resurfacing, enhancing operating efficiency and mission success rates. Using Janus and Slocum enables more complicated and collaborative marine research and defense activities, exploiting NATO's advances in underwater deterrence or offensive technology. that they will give us far more detailed information. It is, as I'm sure you're aware, a very complicated environment, and the more information that we receive, the better we'll be able to focus our systems and, and find these submarines. It, it is a very complex environment, and it's only by being in the environment that we're able to, to get the information we need, and, and that's what the gliders give us, a, a unique, at the right time, in the right place, a source of information. Submarines have gone from invisible weapons of war to vessels that have had to adapt to modern sonar and anti-submarine warfare weapons. From aircrafts to ships, 
Submarines can be located and destroyed with a range of weapons. Especially the anti-submarine homing torpedo. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.